So we had the Sublime and Kenny Omega versus Ray Phoenix. I am still thinking about the flippy-do German suplex thing that Ray Phoenix did. What a guy to the absolutely ridiculous in Snoop Doggy Dog doing the professional wrestling. Last night's Dynamite, it had something for everybody. I thought it was a hoot. But of course, it's Thursday here on the Cultaholic Wrestling YouTube channel, and you know what that means. It's time for your AEWTF moments. Hit the intro, intro man. And when I saw that thing there, I realised to myself that smash, it rhymes with dash. And that clearly means that AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling, they are flirting. I hope they go all the way. I hope they have a one night stand. That one night stand develops into a lovely long fruitful relationship. Then I hope they get married. All the best to them. And of course, it goes without saying my thoughts and prayers go to the person whose job it is to mute the audio. When the wrestlers on AEW Dynamite say something no something they shouldn't be saying. With that being the first example there, I can't quite work it out coming out of last night's show. Does the person who is responsible for muting the audio when the wrestlers say something naughty, do they need a pay rise or do they need fired? I can't work it out. So then we were told because it's a brand new year here in 2021, even though it's exactly the same as 2020, if not a little bit worse after what happened last night in the Americas, you there at home, you told me all the way through last year, oh, I can't wait to see the back of 2020. 2021's going to be so much better. You lied to me. But we were told that because it's a brand new year, the win-loss records in AEW, they have been reset. Which then prompted Chris Jericho to shout in the direction of one Excalibur. Bloody hell, Chris Jericho's voice, it must be very sore this morning. But Jericho told Excalibur that Excalibur for the first time in your pathetic, useless life. He didn't quite say that, but that's what he meant quite clearly. You've got the same win-loss record as Le Champion, naught and naught. And I was thinking to myself, what about this time last year, eh, Chris? Eh? And then we had a direct quote from Frankie Kazarian when he said there's nothing like getting a big old dub on the New Year's Bash edition of AEW Dynamite. And I was thinking to myself, Frankie Kazarian, that must be a lovely thing. All the more power to you in the world. But we don't care about this apparent win on the New Year's Bash edition of AEW Dynamite. We want to hear about your victory on last night's show, the Smash edition. Come on, get it right, man. And again, I ask the question, does the person who is responsible for muting the audio when the wrestler says something naughty, do they need a pay rise or do they need to be fired? And that's because we live in a world on AEW Dynamite where we're not bleeping sugar, honey, ice and tea, but we are bleeping the second half of the word asshole. It would appear hole then is a very offensive word. That there was another example of the muting being very weird on last night's Dynamite. Tone! Tony Khan likes big sweaty men. Tony Khan likes big sweaty men. What is it with wrestling promoters and big sweaty men? And I cannot have been the only person asking the question, why are those two men there wearing clothes and necklaces and belts and other paraphernalia you put on the human body while doing the most official of official weigh-ins? And there's no wonder that the detractors of the professional wrestling business often say that professional wrestling, it inflates the height and the weights of the professional wrestlers to make them seem more impressive than they actually are in the flesh when we've got shenanigans like this going on. Darby and Brian, you should have been naked. And we're three for three, everybody. Three swear words were heard during the first hour of AEW Dynamite last night, and all three of them were missed by the audio mutant person. Perfect consistency. Clearly the person doing the audio muting on last night's Dynamite was from the editing school of one. Dun, 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 dun. Now some people might say that's a bad thing, but I'm here to say it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because at least the audio meeting person is being very consistent indeed. And my thoughts and sentiments there have nothing to do with that there which clearly displays that Tony Khan does actually pay the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast myself, Jack the Jobber and Matthew of Botchamania five whole pounds every single week. Thank you Daddy Tony. 
AEW shills here. And forget about three for three. We are now four for four on the swear words not being bleeped or muted like they should have been by the audio mutant and or bleeping person on last night's Dynamite. But the fourth one is an extra WTF moment because it would now appear that in the professional wrestling we are bleeping the word bitch. And of course that is a massive WTF moment because anybody who has watched the professional wrestling over the last decade especially, they know that every single professional wrestler's favourite word is bitch. You! Dramatic pause. Bitch! You! Son of a bitch! They all love saying bitch, but now we're bleeping bitch. What's going on? And I've been fine with Team Taz's reaction to Sting appearing with a baseball bat until last night. I reckon it's getting silly now because each and every week, those group of lads there, they know what to expect. They know Darby Allen will be there and Sting will come to help Darby Allen because Sting is the biological father of one Darby Allen. It's always a group of lads against two lads and a baseball bat and a skateboard and a title belt. Nothing changes, yet Team Taz, they continue to do absolutely nothing about it. And each and every week this happens, they look more and more silly in this hack's opinion. Do something, man. There's more of you than them. Just twat them. Ain't nothing but a G-thang. Not my words, of course. Not even the words of Snoop, Doggy Dog himself, but the words of Jim Ross. Jim Ross said that on last night's Dynamite. And I don't know about you at home, but after hearing that by Jim Ross on last night's Dynamite, I cannot wait for Snoop Doggy Dog and Jim Ross to do one of those hip hop and happening collabs in the music things. No doubt about it, they're going to have a massive hit called Drop It Like It's Hot Sauce by Gold. And then we have to make it a WTF moment, the moment where Excalibur called Bert Kreischer, Bert Kersher. And as a fan of Two Bears, One Cave, I found that very funny indeed. And that's because I as we all know, even though his apparent name is Bert Kreischer, everyone knows his real name is Bernd Chrysler, and he's really smelly, and he's a massive racist. And if you don't watch Two Bears, One Cave, that makes no sense to you. So let's move on. If you know, you know. So we get to the end of what was a fantastic match between Cody Rhodes and one Matt Seidel. And because there was a bit of shenanigans involving Chaos Project halfway through the match, Chaos Project, they hop in the ring after Cody wins and they attack Cody. And this attack by Chaos Project prompted Tony Schiavone to say about Chaos Project, they are as dangerous as any duo. And I don't know about you at home once again, but my reaction upon hearing that line there from Tony Schiavone, I know he's supposed to put over the wrestlers and make them seem better than they actually are, but how am I, Tony? We were all doing this, weren't we? <laughs> you can't be serious, Tony, surely? And then we got to the most ridiculous part of the night, the part of the night where Snoop Doggy Dog, he started doing the professional wrestling. He scaled the ropes, he leapt like no one's ever leapt before, and he did a Snooper fly splash. Or was it a do? be drop or could it have been a drop it like it's lukewarm because that wasn't hot we have no idea what snoop doggy dog is calling that professional wrestling maneuver but what we do know is that it might just be the worst splash ever seen in a professional wrestling ring ever but hey ho give snoopy dog all the credit in the world for giving it a go when he didn't have to Go on, the Snoop. Another week and another kendo stick shot straight to the head of one Abaddon. I've said this before and I'll say it again, dear viewer. AEW and these repeated shots to the head of Abaddon. They are really lucky she's already dead. And while we're here speaking about Abaddon, can the commentators on AEW, when she's on screen, stop using the word gimmick so much? Lads in the commentary booth last night, we know that Abaddon isn't really a living dead girl, if that's even a thing. To begin with, we know it's not real just like we know that everything else we see on a professional wrestling show it's not real if you know what I'm saying we don't need it spelled out every single minute like it was last night shame on her for believing in a very different feeling character I suppose what was all that about man but gimmick infringement Kane who is at this time otherwise engaged he saw Abaddon do that there and he said to Abaddon run and I guess we won't be making that there a WTF moment, even though that there, it looks like a huge WTF moment. The count of three hasn't been heard when that screenshot there has been taken. But what we do need to make a WTF moment is another commentator on AEW claiming that nobody has ever 
kicked out of the One Winged Angel. Le Champion Chris Jericho, everybody knows Kota Ibushi has. Stop lying to people, will you? It's not nice. And then slap my arse and call me Gertrude Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson of the Good Brothers fame. Wearing Impact Wrestling Tag Team Championship gold, they stormed the ring and I was shocked. And I guess we could have assumed that maybe, just maybe, an Impact Wrestling invasion, and I hesitate to use that word within the context of professional wrestling due to the connotations that word has, but I guess we could have assumed an Impact Wrestling invasion was coming very soon indeed. But still, there they were. I don't know what to say. It's interesting. Isn't it? It's a WTF moment as well. Were you expecting it? Were you bollocks? If you say you are, you're a massive liar. And then we saw some too sweet delicious as the show went off the air. And once again, I don't know what to say other than it's going to be interesting to see where this goes from here on out. Foie. So that's it, I do believe, for all of your WTF moments from New Year's Smash Night 1. There's Night 2 next week. If it's anything like last night, it should be a good show for all concerned. I have been Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling and I'll see you then, if not before, or maybe a bit after.